Now it's time to move to the next step. Now this step is a bit crucial, not exactly crucial, but then uh, difficult to understand. Uh, because when I was doing this before the video, uh, there are a lot of moving parts and there are a lot of uh, things we have to take care of. Because we are not just doing adding of the new product because that's what we have discussed, right? Uh, so we have talked about getting all the products and we are getting those products on the page. So just to show you the browser, this is what we had. So if I see here, we got the products and if you click on this, uh, you will also get the items that is working, right? Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to basically have images as well. So with each product, I want to get their image because that will make it more interesting, right? So because when you go to any website or any e-commerce website with the product, you also get that image. And of course, when you click on this thing on the left hand side, also, I want an image. Next thing I want is the ad product. Of course, this is not there. So we have to change the UI as well. But all I want is this option of adding a product. And when you add the product, I also want to add the image. Now, the tricky part here is if you see, uh, not this, if you see our code, this is the UI. If you see our code in the product, we don't have any variable which handles the image. If we, we have ID, name, uh, description, uh, brand, price, category, uh, release date, availability, and quantity. Nowhere we are talking about image. Okay. So that's something we have to add. So now, this time we'll go for the new uh, UI. Okay, so we have updated the UI for the for this particular section, and we are going to use the new UI. And the new for the link for the new UI, you will find in the description. Okay, but in the new UI, you don't need to handle this because it has been handled in the UI itself. So we don't have to convert that by uh, by doing it in Java. So the uh, in UI also we have done this, so we can remove this. So you got the idea, right? We can do that from the backend as well. Now I'm re removing it, so we'll handle that in the UI. Now what are the variables we need and what is a new UI? So let's see the new UI first. Uh, this is the front end too for the previous section. Uh, I will open the new UI, so I will say open. So this is where I have my new UI, which is the front end three. I will open this. I should have stopped the earlier one. Oh, it was stopped. Okay, I've not stopped it. Maybe the same port now we cannot use. Let's see, let's see. So I will close this and now I will open the terminal. In the terminal, basically I'm going to uh, do the same thing. NPM install, same steps which you have done before. Uh, since new projects, I will just do that once again, run dev and Okay, it's so running on the same port number, so it was stopped automatically, I'm not sure. So if I click on this, it will open the new UI. It is opening on the other screen. I will open that here. Okay, this is a new one. Uh, this is the old one, or which is a new one. Okay, so it, it got refreshed automatically. Anyway, this is a new UI. And what is missing here is you can see that we got the products, but then this thing here, it was an image, and we are not able to show the images because we don't have the image from the back end. Next, when I click on this, on the left hand side as well, this is where I want the image. So I will I want to do that as well. And how do we do it? And also we got the add product page. Now this is where you will enter your product name, brand, description, price, uh, which category it belongs to, the quantity, the release date of the product, and the image. Okay, now this, this is basically tricky part, image, but other, other things are easy. Now if you're following from a long time, from the start, you know how do we create a new product or how do we create a new object and send it and save that in database, we know that. But the tricky part here is to handle the image. So we'll do that. We'll do that step by step. So let's get back to our IDE. Uh, in fact, we should talk some, uh, we should see the code in UI as well. Uh, I'm looking at the code UI with you. So just bear with me. Where are the changes would be? Nothing in app, uh, category, use state. Okay, we got product with ID. This was there before. Okay, we also got cart uh, option. So if I click on cart, we can also see the cart, but we'll do the cart part later, not in this video. And we'll do add, add product. This is what I want to do. And how the add product page is built is, is with the help of this. So in this, we are changing the product and image separately. So we got two different uh, methods to do that. We got set product and set image. So basically we are fetching them individually. So we are fetching the product here or we are sending the product. This is the post and for image, image will be loaded, right? So that will call that function. Just calling handle image change. Handle image change is calling a set image. Okay, makes sense. So this this is how basically you are sending the request for the ad product. 
And on the home page also we have a change because not just the product data, but we also want to show the image. And for the image, we are sending the request separately. If you can see, we are sending the request for each product. So we are using a map for iteration and for each product with a different ID, we are sending a request for the image. Okay. So since in the UI we are using this format, let's say use the same format in the backend. So the request would be product slash the product ID. If the product ID is one, it will be product slash one slash image, product slash two slash image. That's how it will go. So it will fetch the image for a particular product. Uh, since it's not in database, it is giving you that blank icon, but that's what it is there in the UI. I don't think there is much change apart from that. There's also cart, but then we'll be, using, we'll be doing cart later. In product, individual product also, we are going to uh, supply the image. So same URL, you can see product slash one slash image or product slash two slash image. So same URL we are going to use. So in the back end, basically we have to build two URLs, one for adding a product and one for getting that image. Okay, so let's do step by step. Let's go back to our code. And the first thing you're going to do is change this product. So for the image, I need three things because when you send data on a client side, you have to also specify the content type of the image. Uh, not all formats are supported. Maybe someone is sending the malicious executable file or some JavaScript file. So make sure that you go for images like JPG. So that's something you can check on in the front end side. So you have to specify what type of content you are working with. So this image actually can be a file. So file name, file type, and uh, file data. So we can also say image data, that's fine. So I will say private string image name, uh, then private string image type, and uh, the data. So I will say private. Now what type of, well, how do you store your data? So basically there are multiple ways of handling with images. You can store the image on some uh, cloud storage. Okay. And you can get the link of it. So you can store the URL of that cloud storage in your database. That's one way. Uh, we went for the simple way because otherwise we have to sign up the AWS account, store the image there. So multiple steps, right? So just, just to keep it simple, I'm storing the image in database. Again, not a great idea, but it works. So I'll be using a byte array because we are going to store that in a byte format and I will say image data. Now, whenever you work with this type of data, like byte array, which you want to store in database, we have to store that as a large object. So we have to use annotation for from persistence, which is lob, which is large object. Okay, so this is what we have done. And now if you run this, you will get a different database, different table and since I'm working with images, I don't want some preloaded data. So I will, okay, let's have the same preload data and let's see what happens. So let's reload this to see what is a database change we are getting. So this is loading. Okay, Tomcat started. Uh, I will be going to my console, S2 console. Okay, refresh, default data. I will say product and star. So you can see we got this data, but we got three more columns. We got image data, image name, and image type, and all are null. You know why? It's because we have not specified this thing in the data.sql. But I don't want it actually, because image is not there. Uh, I have to manually update each image. We can do that in the update feature, but then we are not working on update now. So I will just go with the blank data and I will type each object. Tedious task, but we have to do it, right? So. What I will do is I will just delete this or maybe I will just change the name of it. I hope by changing name, it will not be loaded. So also data SQL one. Uh, next, I want to, so we have, the, we have made the changes in the product and we have seen that it is reflecting in database as well. It's time to accept the new uh, product. So I will create an object. I will create a method here for the new product. So I will say public will return the response entity itself with some data and I, I may return any type of data. So I will say put in question mark because I'm not sure we might return the data or we might return exception. So we'll have it both. Uh, I'm not exception, but only the status if something went wrong. Uh, next, I will say add product. Now the question is what kind of mapping we are, we are going to do. So of course we have to do the post mapping. So post mapping and the URL is simply slash product. Nothing else, just a product. Because we are sending, sending data in the body, right? So this is where you are send, going to send data. Now, if it is a normal product with it, without the image, it's very simple. You can use request body and we can simply say product, product. Our job is done, right? It will accept the product object. But the tricky part here is we are sending the image as well, which is a different format. So instead of using a product uh, or request body, we'll be using the request part. 
Now, request part and request body is a bit different. Request body accept the whole object or the whole JSON as object. Request part will accept in a part, in a part, as the name suggests, right? In two different parts or multiple parts. So, request part for product it will accept in product, but for the image, we'll do that the next line. So, I will say request part and we'll accept the image. Now, image itself is a file and we'll accept that as a multi part file, yeah, multi part file, and we'll store that in the name called image file. You can also say image, that works but image file is here. Now, once you got your data, we have to send this data to the next layer. Who's the next layer? We have service layer, right? How are we going to send this? So I can simply say, hey service, uh, add the product, whatever I'm accepting, and I'm going to pass you two things. I'm going to pass you the product, and I'm going to pass you the image file. So you just take care of storing that in database. But I also want to check if it is actually getting stored. So what I will do is, I want it to return me a product, I will say product, okay? And what if something goes wrong? Because we also have a product name here. Let's say product one and, okay, how we are going to get the error? So let's say if something goes wrong with the add product, it will throw the exception, right? So what I can do is I can set that in a try catch. So I will try to add the product. If it is not working, if I get the exception E, so in this case, I will simply return the uh, some other response, okay? But if, some, if everything goes wrong, I will return new response entity in which I'm going to save the product, which is the new, which is the save project in, in database, and also the status code. The status I want to save is HTTP status dot created. But what if something goes wrong? In that case, I'm going to return the response object, new response entity, but we'll send only the status, not the object itself. Or maybe I can send the message so e dot get message. So it will send the other message. Again, uh, these things will be handled from the client side. So whatever message you're sending, client can decide they want to show it or they want to handle their own way, but I'm sending the message. With message, I also want to st send the status. I will say status dot uh, for error. It should be internal server error, something went wrong, but also we are sending the message. So at least the client will know what is going wrong. Okay, so we got add product, but it's not there in the service. So let's create this. I will just click here and say, hey, create this method called add product. And now the next step goes here. How do we do this? How do we add a product? It's actually quite simple, right? We can add a product by saying, hey repo, save the product. It's so simple, right? Get the uh, product from the, uh, from the controller, controller send it to service, and we are getting in the service. From service, send it to repo, job is done, right? But actually no, because we don't just have to send the product, we have to also send the image, right? Now this is tricky. To send the image, basically we have to get the image and we have to convert that image into bytes. Remember this database we are showing that in a bytes format. Okay, so we have to get the bytes format. And not just that, we have to also get the name of the image and the type of the image. So in the product, we'll say, uh, set the image name. And how will you get the image name? So I will say image file dot get name. In fact, not name, it will not return. We have some other method. Yeah, it's original file name, product dot set uh, image type. So I'll say image file dot get content type. And then we have to set the image as well. So image data. And this will be your image file dot, we have to convert that into bytes and we have a method called get bytes. Okay, it might throw an exception, yeah. So we have to add the signature, it might throw an exception, so I'm throwing IO exception. And once you have all the image data in the product, I can simply say return. Uh, so whatever you save, we'll be returning it here and it, it should be stored in database. I hope this will work. So what we have done is we got the product, we got the image, uh, we got image details and set that in the product data or product object, and then we are saving it. So this should be stored in the database. That's the first step. Let's try, let's see what happens. I will relaunch it, and if something goes wrong, we'll solve it, right? We know how to solve it now. So Tomcat got restarted. I will go back to my browser. I have to move multiple pages. And here, I will click on home. Okay, it says nothing is visible, so I will click on add product. Let's add some product. I will say Sam Mobile. The brand is Samsung. Some description. Price $99. Uh, it's a type of mobile. Stock is, let's say, four. Date, release date is, let's say, 1st June. 
image I got in my downloads. So that's the image here. Available, yes, click on Submit. Okay, it says product added successfully. But when I click on OK, and if I click on Home, image is still not there, okay? So we'll solve this, but I want to see if the image actually has been sent on the in the database. For that, I will go to H2, and if I click on Product, okay, so I think I have to reload, yeah. Connect, Product Run. Okay, we got the product. And if you can see, uh, we got, Okay, something went wrong with the description. We'll check that later. Uh, but we got, we got the image, we got the image name, we got the image type, we got the name of the phone, price, quantity, okay. So these two things we have to sync up. I think there's something wrong with the communication between the client and the server, but that is something will resolve it. It, it is, might be some name issue. But the, problem, but the main thing is we are able to send the image. But why the image uh, product details are not coming up? What I will do is I'll just go back here and just I just want to print whatever we are receiving in product just to see uh, what is missing from the client side. Add product. Also Sam M brand Samsung. Some description. Eighty-eight dollars. So phone. Stock. Six. Release date one. Image. Available. Submit. Product added. But now I want to see what is coming on the console. On the console, it's sending ID zero, makes sense, and one, okay. So description is not getting sent from the client itself. So some, there's some issue with the UI. We'll get it resolved and we'll replace the link if I corrected that. But the most important thing is we are sending the image separately and that's why you got null here. But we'll, we'll solve that, it's nothing, not a big issue. I think these are the names we have changed, right? That's why there was an issue. Anyway, uh, okay. I also, we are not even loading the default data, so that is working. But what about the image? Why it is not loading the image? It's because if you see the UI, the image is getting fetched as a separate URL. And this is something we have to build. Okay, so uh, we need to work on this. Not just on the product page, but also on the home page. It is requesting for that uh, URL. And now we have to search for that URL. Where it is doing that, yeah, it's here. So we just have to build this thing and it will work. But how? Uh, let's see that in the next video. So in this video, we just have seen how do we add a new product, but with the help of image as well, uh, with the help of multi-part multi file. And we are getting the details about the image and storing that in the product. And then we are saving the product in database. So cool, that's how this thing works. See you in the next video, where we will going to work on this. Bye-bye.